Auf der NAB Show 2014 stellte Matrox die Monarch HD vor. 2015 dann die Monarch HDX und jetzt auf der NAB Show 2016 die Monarch LCS. Neu an der LCS im Unterschied zu den bisherigen Modellen ist, dass nicht nur ein Kanal, sondern zwei Kanäle aufgezeichnet werden können. Und der Hintergrund ist der, dass man festgestellt hat, als man die Monarchlösungen, die ja im Wesentlichen dazu da sind, ein Videosignal oder ein Computersignal aufzuzeichnen und gleichzeitig zu streamen, dass diese Lösungen sehr stark im Education-Bereich, also im Ausbildungsbereich eingesetzt werden. Typischerweise hat man es dort allerdings damit zu tun, dass ein Computer eine PowerPoint, eine Präsentation an die Wand wirft und gleichzeitig ein Sprecher im Bild ist. Und diese Anforderung, die von den Universitäten zurück an Matrox getragen wurde, auf die hat man jetzt reagiert und hat eben ein Gerät gebracht mit zwei Eingangsmöglichkeiten. Einmal für den Computer, der die PowerPoint liefert und einmal für die Kamera, die den Sprecher abbildet. Bei mir ist jetzt Wayne von der Firma Matrox und er wird uns ein bisschen eine Produktdemo geben und einen Einblick in die neue Lösung. Hi Wayne. Sounds like a great product for universities and others. Can you show us a little bit the workflow, how to work with these two streams? Sure. Um, well, as you mentioned in the opening, it's a standalone appliance that has a built on Linux and it has a web server. So how Like, like we all access our routers in our homes, you just find a computer or, or a device that has a web browser in it and you open the IP address, which opens the command center that we see here. Then in the production tab, uh, we can define that I want HDMI as my input A or SDI. Okay. And then my second input is the computer input, as you mentioned in the opening. Is a HDMI. It could also be coming from a DVI signal. You just need a DVI to HDMI convert, or like a little gender benders, uh, little adapters to change the format. Or even display port adapters. Something yeah, like exactly. That. As long as just to get the HDMI, yeah. and then the analog source could be embedded from input uh, A or input B, which digital input, or you can have an analog input. Okay. So you define those settings, and then on the output side, you can define on the SDI output and HDMI output the videos independently. So you can have okay. both outputting A, both outputting B, or so B, it's doing A. conversion, it's uh, well, you're coming it's in with HDMI. Through. It's just passing through, it's okay. one to one. So you can be yeah. driving like projectors yeah. with, with, with the output of the box. So you put your camera in and your computer, yeah. and then your computer HDMI out could be driving a projector behind the okay. professor, for example. Yeah. And then the third option here is called channel preview. Basically, what that does is in our in our three production modes, which I'll show you in just a second, it would be the exact resolution that you're streaming or recording to that would be coming out, and the production. So if you're doing side by side, what would be on the projector or on a HDMI monitor, if you wanted to have confidence preview, it would be what you were your encoder settings would be uh, defined in the encoder page. So in the drop down list, we have. <coughs> Two modes of isolated, single isolated, which is more or less as you described in the opening, the HDX product. So if I have one, one input, I can set up the two independent encoders. Yeah. But then we have dual isolated. Okay. So now I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do any um, composition or, or uh, mixing of the two videos. I'm going to record, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to record channel A into its own encoder and channel B into its second encoder. So that means that uh, if you do dual recording, you can also use this uh, device for typical solutions where you just have two video streams or two video sources which you want to record at the same time individually. Absolutely, that is that is correct. It's uh, du You can dual stream the two, or like you were mentioning, I can dual record and then take it into Adobe, for example, yeah. Premiere, and then do video editing with the two sources. It's like two uh, standalone recorders in one box. In that in that aspect, you're uh, you're correct in defining it, it that way and seeing that as a as a potential feature and a market. Okay. Um, then then we move along to what we have here is a switcher mode. So when when you when you define that, it will now allow you to take your two inputs and by either using the production button that's in the command center. Okay. or the button on the box, I could switch between full A, full B. So I'm now doing a live switcher, just a basic switcher, but I'm c 
creating my production by uh, you know a show a show B. It's um, it, it's uh, it's popular because a lot of people want to control what the viewer is viewing. Yeah. At this moment, I want you to pay attention to the professor, yeah. and at this moment, I want you to pay attention to the supporting material, such as a keynote or or a PowerPoint. And as you note in the beginning, there is the HDMI output with a channel preview, so there I can control which what is that what the viewer yeah. is watching so, right now. So yeah, so if we were in switcher mode and we were in channel preview, yeah. what would be sent to HDMI output would be exactly what was being sent to the encoder. So okay. it's a, it's also on HDMI and going into the encoder. Then yeah. B when I switch, and then and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's it's it it allow you to drive in-house productions also. And then you, 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 you catch on quick. So, and then we have our uh, third, uh, second mode of operation, I apologize. It's our picture in picture. Yeah. And then you can define uh, which corner. So we can have top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left. Yeah. And then we also have center crop. So when it's not enabled center crop, it's going to be a full 16 by 9 yeah. uh, scaled to the encoding. Uh, Settings. So if I was inputting 1080 and I was recording at 720, yeah. then we're going to scale the 1080 signal yeah. down to like 640, 360, and then place it over the 720 canvas, if we'll call it. Okay. And, and by by doing a center crop, usually a person is not as big or not as 16 yeah. to nine. Well, well, well <laughs> not 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 just that, but <laughs> that's a good one. But not just that, but there's, sometimes there's like extra. Um, like white, like if they're standing behind a blackboard or a whiteboard, you know, and you just want more more real estate for the supporting material, you know, it's like at my shoulder. I mean, shoulders. that's something we see in TV shows and use all the time. All the time, all the time. And that aspect ratio would be 8, dot, eight to 9. Eight, eight, instead of 69, it would be 8, 9. So just a half side, but in the middle. So yeah, yeah, you crop. Height, you crop off the two sides. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then the final one is the side by side mode. So here we can do equal value or equal weight of A and B, or the, you can actually define one of the presets would be a center crop, yeah. which gives more room on that canvas to show you more of the input B. Um, and then in the encoder, so we didn't apply any settings, so it's just popping up. Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to apply those settings? And then in, here we're showing in the encoder, so channel one, as you see, it, we got channel one and channel two, they're completely independent. Yeah. And each input, or each channel, excuse me, can be assigned to be either record, I could, uh, so when I'm in record, I can define if I'm gonna record locally to USB okay. port one, port two, or an SD card attached, or I can map it to a network. So if I was, um, had a, a, a shared storage or a shared folder on a computer, that's, yeah. so I will target, well, the user would, to find that network path, and then we would write to that folder on the network. Um, another nice, another nice feature is the ability to segment the files. So every once the user could define that every five minutes or every ten minutes, create a new file. So when we switch that file, it will create a brand new file. It won't lose any frames between the switch, but that's a, an additional comfort or safety factor in case anything ever happened, like you ran out of storage space and stuff like that. As you know, when you're writing a file, if anything happens to the writing of the file before the file is closed, the whole file is lost. Here, it'll always ensure that the file keeps getting created as, and in case of any interruption like power failure or storage goes full, you would only lose that last little bit of if you set it at five minutes, you would lose the last five minutes. Yeah. And you can still, and then with our free utility, you can still consolidate all those little pieces back to one contiguous file. Um, and then, you get, like again, uh, you have the second encoder that can be completely set up to something completely different. And the nice thing about the product is also has its ability, so we're gonna leave that without applying those settings, to save. I could set the box up and, I, and then I could save that. And I could save it as a, a new profile. And I could save up to eight profiles. Uh -huh, into the box. Sorry. Into the box. So then the user only has to come. I don't have any saved here. But I could save one so we could see how it works. So I can save one to, to this one. And I'm going to call it uh, Mike. 
and save it. So now Mike is loaded and then I can go down. If I had multiple profiles, I would have the list and I could load that now in and I could say, okay, like for example, Math 101 or Science. And yeah. so the, the professor or the operator just has to go one time and select their profile and load it and then okay. just push start. Yeah, that's cool. So it's, that's, it's that, it's that um, the nice. profile stays in the box. Yeah. It's not like you it's, have to use a computer and save there. No, it's no, inside. It's in the inside the box, yeah. right? Every time you boot it up or yeah. you just, you're right. Okay, so um, we're back to that. So now we can, we're can we streaming yeah. and then uh, we could see. You can have a look at the results. Yeah, here we go. We're doing a side by side. I can go. I can go full screen. Yeah. Uh, you can see the quality. It's very nice. Yeah. Uh, so this is a sample where signal A, so the teacher video signal is cropped left and right. So we have this eight to nine signal, half sixteen to nine, and on the right hand side we have the full picture as it comes from the laptop with a presentation. Absolutely correct. Spot on. And then the one other. Th and then the one other thing that I'd like to show you, if you remember, we talked about this dual isolated mode, and you were talking about recording them. Yeah. So what, what, what's really nice? So, so far, what we just when we when we demoed this, it's like the, the producing is being done by the operator. Yeah. They want specifically to show side yeah. by side in this example. Yeah. We can do picture in picture, or we can do the switching. They, they want to control the production. But there's this new way of delivering material to the students. Yeah. And based on these new web players, they're multi-stream web players. Okay. And here's an example of one of them. It's a free web player that's an open source web player. And what I'm doing here is I re pre-recorded prior to our, your interview, our interview here, yeah. I recorded the two isolated. Okay. Of, of the demo we just did. Yeah. And I have them sitting on my my, uh, my hard disk, yeah. and this player is saying, go get those two files. Okay. So I'm gonna start playing now, okay? So here I start playing the file. So now it's playing those two files. In sync. In sync, yeah. okay? But the nice thing is, is that the student could say, I wanna see just a professor. So it's them controlling the production now. I just want to see yeah. the PowerPoint. I'd like to see it in a picture in picture. I'd like to see it in side by side. Wow, that's nice. Can you can you just show the the possibilities here? What what do we see? Okay. We see different kinds of presentations, so bigger professor, smaller presentation, things like that. Or side by side. Okay, and, and as you say, in this in this case. Uh, the student can, or the, the, the people yeah, the who are viewers, watching, the yeah. viewers, they can decide what they want to see. Maybe they need some, some more details from the presentation. Yeah, it, or what, of, yeah. What, what, what is of interest to them at that particular moment? You know, and, they can, and by offering it in this way, they can always back up the file and then re-listen to it. Because with live streams, you can't, like, what did he say? I, I, I don't quite understand that. So then you could re-review it. Okay. Uh, you know, and then you can then focus right in on, oh, that's what he meant by that part of his lecture. Um, and um, you know, the I think the the main the main thing to take away from this little bit of demo here is that the both inputs have frame synchronizers. Okay. So because we all know that uh, computers run at let's say like 60 hertz. Yeah. But our cameras are 1080-25, 720p50, 1080p50. So they're not going to be ever in sync. So here, what we're, what we're doing is we're receiving the 60 and the 50, and we're bringing them inside, and we're basically like opening them up and recalculating them okay. to be 50. Yeah. And we're aligning them, we're synchronizing them. And once we have them perfectly in sync, then we put the audio that's coming from either SDI or HDMI embedded or analog, and we're locking it frame accurate and timestamps by each frame. So, and then we lock it down and we do our whatever processing, dual isolated or side by side or whatever, to guarantee sync throughout the recording. 
well. That sounds really amazing and that's a typical problem many users have. I say some words about that in German. Viele Anwender kennen das wahrscheinlich. Wenn es darum geht, Computersignale aufzuzeichnen, ist es sehr viel komplizierter als Videosignale aufzuzeichnen. Warum? Computersignale sind im RGB Farbraum und YUV Farbraum, das ist eigentlich das, was Videosignale typischerweise mitbringen. Die Bildraten sind unterschiedlich. Computersignale liegen in 60 Hertz vor und bei den, bei den Videosignalen haben wir es in Europa in der Regel mit 50i oder 25p zu tun. Und selbst wenn wir auf 60 Hertz Computersignale gehen, 60p, sind das 59, 94, also äh, auch nicht ganz 60 Hertz. Ähm, diese Problematik, die wird hier von Matrox in diesem Gerät gleich mit geregelt, denn tatsächlich ist die Anwendung ja explizit dafür ausgelegt, sowohl Computer als auch Videosignale aufzuzeichnen und die eben auch gleichzeitig in ein ja, identisches Format zu bringen. Normalerweise, wenn wir eine ähnliche Anwendung haben für den Live-Bereich, wo wir eine, eine Präsentation äh, in ein Videosignal konvertieren wollen, dann brauchen wir einen Konverter. Diese Konverter, wenn die eine gute Qualität haben, liegen normalerweise im Preisbereich von etwa 1000 Euro. Diese Funktionalität ist hier also gleich direkt implementiert. Sehr schöne Geschichte. This is really a solution. You put it there, you can record both channels and even there is the possibility, if you use this kind of player, to let the viewer decide what he wants to see. Or If the operator says, no, I want to make the design myself, he can do it, he can fix it. Absolutely, that's, that's it. It's, 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 it's very flexible, it's easy to use, and it's very simple to integrate if you want it. We even have like API stuff and stuff like, like that, and all that documentation and all that is Okay, on so there website. is a SDK, you can really control yeah, the device? API, 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 API yeah. yeah. It's not SDK level, but yeah. API, but yeah, we have, uh, and we're going to be Uh, also offering, like the HDX has a, a, the ability to load XML files also. Okay. So not in the first release, but shortly yeah. after the first release, like we always do, as you know, we have updates always going, ongoing and yeah. ongoing. So we'll be adding even more functionality and more features to okay. it, which includes XML metadata cool. and stuff like that. But it's easy to understand that this is a device which has been developed together with users or user ideas or what users said, we want that, we need that. Yeah, we're all constantly listening to users. We're not just sitting in a little little bubble and thinking of products on our own. We we listen, we do a lot of research, we find out the, the holes, the pain points, the shortcomings, and we design and you know engineer products to, to, to fit those holes or pain points or those workflows those, that uh, customers are asking all the time for. Okay. Just give us an idea, price point and delivery time? It's at 2,495 euro and will be shipping in June. In June? In June. Okay. So for the next term when uh, the students start learning, <laughs> they might can even use this technology already. We're hoping. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Wayne, and have a great NAB show. Thank you, Shane. <laughs>